You've been to like Benicassim, Glastonbury, Coachella, find it best for what's taking you so long? What's taking us so long? Yeah. The, the invite? <laughs> um, really? Yeah. I think this is the first year we've been invited. have never been asked to come here before, so um, yeah, that is, that's the truth. Uh, cool, so uh, what can we expect from this performance then tonight? Um, well, we released our new record on Monday, so um, we'll be showcasing some of that. And um, a definitely lot. catching Tudor and McGov in a very at a very excited time for us. We're very excited at the moment. Mm. We may not seem like it, <laughs> but I mean, we just put out a new record. It's a new yeah, the next you, chapter you kind of thing. You said I think you, you said on this album you've got a lot more stadium kind of anthems. <laughs> I think someone we else said that. Say that but I, yeah, I definitely that's didn't say that. But say that. I, I'd say you know we're, we're we're always aiming to push things you know as far as we can and keep things growing and you know every time we come back to cities we want to play bigger shows and every time we come back to festivals each year we we want to be playing bigger slots and you know if the day comes when stadiums or arenas um, rear their heads and um, will have us we're we're definitely not going to say no and. Um, it, it was never a case of gearing the music towards that sort of um, that sort of stage, but um, we we have we have big ideas in our head, and I think some of that sometimes comes across in the music. So I mean, obviously, with your sophomore album is always the tricky one after first release. How do you approach it differently? Like, what goes in your head when you're going through it? We point is to we not really, approach it differently. I we think. just had spent so much time on the road with her history that we were just really, really ready to get back into the studio and do the other part of bit, what being in a band is for, for us that we love, you know, the writing of the songs and we probably neglected that for a, a good couple of years and, you know, having travelled around the world and been, been inspired and influenced by so much, like it was just, we were so ready to get back in and write together that we didn't really need any sort of agenda or, you know, any sort of real thought behind what we are actually going to go in and do, we sort of had it all ready to go. So, which is the track on the new album you're most kind of proud of? Um, there's there's different ones for different reasons. Um, the title track to me is quite important. It it was a um, it took a long time to put together and to get just right. You know, it was months and months of work to put that one song together. So, I, I feel very proud of that song for that reason. Mm. That you know, it really paid off in the end. You you produced with. Uh, Jack Knightley. Yeah, that. So obviously he worked with you too, and he's worked with some massive names. Like, how is it working in the studio with him? It's funny because you kind of you hear about <laughs> who he's worked with, and you'd imagine him to be this sort of like big ego, hotshot producer. Um, but you go in, and he's just this like funny man from Ireland. You know, he's, he just gets involved, gets his hands dirty. You know, just he's always on the floor, like playing around with guitar pedals and. He's just still fascinated by new bands and new music and just loves what he does. His roster is kind of amazing because the, the names that people see are the names like U2, R.E.M., Snow Patrol, but if you look at what he's done, he's, he's worked with so many smaller acts as well. He works with independent artists and unsigned artists and he works with electronic artists and, um, you know, like all kinds of different music. So. Um, he had a lot to kind of bring to what we do. Mm. So, coming to a festival, obviously, you, you've got your tour coming up in January, which is going to be smaller venues. I think you've got 10 dates uh, in January come this year. But how do you kind of adapt your, kind of your set and how you perform to kind of massive all audience for festivals where you've got smaller gigs? I found last year I saw the drums here and they kind of their sound was kind of lost because they're on the main stage. But then I saw it at Shepherd's Bush and it just was amazing because obviously we've got the acoustics. Like, how do you kind of adapt? Nothing is adapted. We play that we go out and play the best show that we can, no matter what it is. And um, our sound is is fairly adaptable. You know, we we started off in the in the bars and stuff, and we we grew gradually. We never went from from a really small venue straight to a massive venue. We were constantly like climbing the ladder um, at different paces around the world. And um, so it would be the case of in the UK, we would be, maybe be playing to a few thousand people, but we'd head over to America the next week and play to a couple of hundred people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we got really used to switching from big audiences to small audiences in very short spaces of time. And we've just become very, very comfortable with that. And so the show just easily seems to like slip into 
Mm-hmm. You know, any 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 stage in the arena, any any size of audience. Which is I think our, our show is probably a bit different to maybe what people would expect if they haven't seen us before, like if they just heard the records, because I think live it's maybe it comes across a bit more of like a sort of a, a rock band sort of sound. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't think that from listening to the like first record, I guess. Um, so I think that sort of helps, sort of on a bigger stage. Like I think you know, like a band like the Drums obviously would never come across as a rock band, and um, so it works like you know in a theatre. Um, but maybe we would get lost on the main stage. But I think um, like we've got you know loud drums and loud guitars when we play live. Mm-hmm. You know, turn the amps up to eleven and all that. <laughs> there you go, Spinal Tap. Do you still do that? Do they actually make those now up to eleven? Do they actually make them? They make them to go up to 12 now. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's ruined. I know exactly where you're getting that from. What? You're getting that from that poster in John Henry's, aren't you? What time do you guys go? I have an amp that goes up to 12. Oh, the Fender's got to 12. The Fender's got to 12, do Oh, God, that really is like... Mine it's really annoying. Now. The 12, because... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, you've just performed in one of the biggest audiences, like a global audience. And you said that you actually thought it was a dream when you first got the phone call. Was it like a dream to perform? In a way, yeah. Um, I mean, I remember every single little thing about it, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel like I was there. Um, the whole thing, the whole thing was so ridiculous, and that it was it, it, very difficult to take it all in. Um, but yeah, it's still, st- I'm still working on processing it. You yeah. Know? And you guys, like, where did you watch the ceremony from? Stadium. Uh, yeah, Stadium. Yeah. How was that? It was great. It was good. The flag bits were boring, you know. Is it that, oh, that two hour bit where like, they're we going around? You know? Yeah, did you watch closing ceremony? That was no. even worse. It was like on repeat. It was like the DVD extras. <laughs> like, it was like the opening ceremony. Yeah, that's what Danny Boyle's Club Room 4 looks like. That's what I thought of closing ceremony. <laughs> but so with Danny, obviously, you know, his movies, he's had people doing sound orbital work with. Do you think there's a chance in the future you might work on some of that? his soundtracks? Is he maybe that in the future, maybe? <laughs> no <laughs> idea. Awesome. Um, I mean, film film soundtracks has always been something I've been very interested in, and somewhere down the line, I'd love to have a go at it. But um, like Nick Cave's just done because he directed Lawless, that new one out. And yeah. I think, really? Yeah, he he that. he wrote the screenplay, he adapted it from this book, The Wettest Country, and I think that's that's got anyway. Uh, yeah, he's done that. He's brought a studio album. But I think actually a lot of movie soundtracks are really underrated. Yeah, like Drive soundtrack was insane, yeah. and Kavinsky gonna be here tonight. Like, is there like a kind of what? If you could be the type of movie that you'd have your sound in, what would be your perfect like? There's the only thing is like we we I guess because when we did this new album, we were aware that our songs might be used for something, um, we which we weren't when we were writing the first album. So I mean we were like thinking like and we we'd written a song and we were recording it and thinking about the vibe. We were like you could so imagine this in like this kind of movie or, but we came up with so many different scenarios across the whole album. So. There's loads of them. You know, there's a couple could fit into, uh, you know, uh, the next the next quirky indie rom com. You know, yeah. uh, and there's new ones that could be in a like a fight scene and stuff. That's crazy. Well, you just have I got a lot of different sounding stuff. You you've had so much of your music in ads and like films. Is there one in particular you kind of like you saw that ad and you were like, oh, I really like that one. Or is there a film uh, that you were like, I wish they hadn't used it. There was an advert where we wished they hadn't used it. It was a. a was it the Belgian National Lottery or something? <laughs> it's a total mistake. Like it's too close. So they used the song "Do You Want It All," and it was atrocious. It was oh like, God, totally. You know, Do you want it all? And those people like winning the lot, like pretending they'd won the lottery on that. It was just I shouldn't be telling people about this. Oh, it was God. dreadful. That's cool. So, um, yeah, who you? So you're obviously going to be touring. Um, who is the worst person to travel with? Really, who's the worst? Who's the grumpiest? Who's the smelliest? Our lighting guy is definitely the smelliest. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone's got their own little quirks on the road. Um, Kevin's the worst if you're uh, in bed and he comes in later than you. He, yeah, uh, just has no filter. Whenever he There's no, yeah, you, you know, no, no consideration for anyone who's asleep. Turns all the lights on. Uh, yeah. Jumps on you, falls on you. It's worse when we had to share rooms in hotels as well. Oh God. I'm not go into that. Back in the day, it's different now. Sick on the wash bags, stuff like that, you know. <gasps> but we'll not go in. We'll not go in. We'll not go in. <laughs> it gets, it gets so much worse. <laughs> Throwing up in the shower, and then you get in the shower the next morning, and it just clogs. Oh no, sick. mate! 
Don't worry, I might not put that in. It gets even worse, but don't worry about how's, that. How's your tour bus? Our tour bus is all right. We've had we've had very bad luck with tour buses this summer, um, just because simply because every band in the world is you know playing festivals, so um, sometimes the pickings are slim, <laughs> and we've ended up with some pretty bad ones. Ones like leaking toilets. We had this one a couple of weeks ago that the toilet was broken and it was upstairs in the bus and directly below it was the bay where we kept all of our luggage and the toilet leaked no. over all of our bags and um, yeah and then you've got problems with doors and uh, air conditioning like either the air conditioning freezes you or it doesn't work and you end up in like an oven oh and it's very funny that we it, if we, if we could have seen ourselves like if, if like two or three years ago we could look into the future and see what we were complaining about right now. I know, I think, I'm just thinking crazy. back in my head, like know, my some, tent, and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty I mean, diet. sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I, I can look at it as, as being a little ungrateful to complain about these things, but at the same time, you know, this is our life. You yeah, know, it's this a job. is, that, that's our home essentially, mm. and um, coming back to that every day, um, if it's not a nice one, can make life really miserable. So I don't, I, I'm not afraid to complain if it's not right. There's so been a lot of complaints recently in the past <laughs> couple of days that, the, that there's no plugs right by your bed. You know, like your individual <laughs> plug. That's what everyone. is always a concern, even in hotel rooms. Yeah. Never, like, it's never a good They're never plugs. in a good position. Exactly. It's like, who, where's the feng shui in this? Like, let's do some electrical <laughs> feng shui, get everyone in the right position. America's very good for it. The UK is awful. There's never a plug because you always want your plug beside your bed. So you have your phone charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to sit on your nightstand. You know. American hotels are brilliant. Every hotels every best. hotel you go into in America will have a swimming pool, yeah. free Wi-Fi, gym. Yeah, gym, free breakfast. You got to pay for all of that in the UK. So, and, and all of them have know. like happy hour. Uh, and like you go to like the restaurant, it's like happy yeah. hour, and they bring out big pictures of beer and stuff. That's nice. So, who else are you looking forward to seeing? Are you gonna stay after you get, you know, stay at the weekend? Yeah, I've and never, see I've never seen New Order before, so I'm you really, haven't. I'm really excited about that. Can't wait to see Earth, Wind, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. yeah. September was on in like 20 minutes. I oh, really, all oh, right. September, that's like my running track at the moment. Like yeah. I love it. it. Just like gets me going when I feel like I'm on a lull. Put it on, it's like, so yeah, let's keep going. Last year, when every time we seemed to go out, like after a show or, or something, just like someone would play it and it just... Get memories. Yeah. So if there was just one track that you kind of wish, I wish I'd written that song, I wish that was the song that I had and I released it, what would it be? Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana. That's <laughs> good. Um, it's pretty tricky. It's a tough yeah. one. It's like picking your favourite movie, like, but yesterday, Paul yeah. McCartney. It's one of one of one of my favourite melodies of all time, and it's yeah. If I, I, I constantly wish that I could write something like that. I've never come close. Oh, you got time. No, I've still got time. You got time. Yeah. How about you? What's your favourite song? Earth, favorite Earth song. Is <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, it's my favourite song. <laughs> I wish I'd written that Pyramid song with Frank Ocean's new album. Just because it's like three killer tracks in one. Oh, really? Wow. Cool. I'll have to have a listen. I haven't heard that one, so I'll make sure I listen when I get back. But thanks so much for being with me, guys. No problem. It's great. Oh, Good luck. Okay. I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't actually seen you live, so oh, it's going to be fun. Oh,